Okay, just a short video today. I'll explain why. I've got a load of things that I'm working on at the moment. I've got things in various states of disassembly, like this, for example, which I've taken apart and needs a new belt. And hopefully that'll be working when I put that in there and you'll better see it in a future video. I've also got a dash cam that's on test. I've got another couple of dash cams in boxes that I need to get on test. Action camera, uh, mini cameras, and a whole stack of retro stuff over here that I can see that you can't, that we'll be featuring in future videos, as long as it works. But none of it is ready at the moment so one thing I've got in my inbox quite a lot is people asking me can I do some more stuff about cassettes and I thought well I've got quite a few cassette based things that I bought recently just mostly for my own entertainment so I'll lump a few of those together in this video and make a short video about cassettes but just really a bit of an entertainment video so don't build your hopes up too much but here we go here's a video about some sort of cassette type stuff so first up, I bought a couple of cassette albums. Now, it's not something I normally do. The last one I bought was that Guardians of the Galaxy Special Edition. I think it was probably 10 years before then I got one. Anyway, the reason I got these is I had this album on cassette when I was younger, and somebody took the cassette, and I've just got the box now. And then Dr. Octagon, well, I like Cool Keith, so I've got that downloaded, but I wanted an original one. Now, you might notice something slightly unusual with these cassettes, with the cover. Let me get into it and uh, show you. Oh, it's a long time since I've took the shrink wrap off a cassette. That's... Uh, that takes you back, doesn't it? Anyway, there you go. You won't be able to see it properly because you're watching it in 2D, but it's got a 3D lenticular cover on this one. And I thought it was nice just to replace a cassette that I lost and also get one with a lenticular cover. The actual insert is just a normal paper cover like you get on any compact cassette. It's just a little piece of card in the front here, a bit like a postcard type thing. And that's the lenticular cover. I just thought it was a nice little thing. I'll show you where you get these from in a second. But yeah, this shop had a couple of these and they came from America, cost me quite a bit, import duty and things. But you know, it's nice to listen to hip hop on cassette. I think that's where it kind of feels right to me. Now the cassette itself, I've wound it forward a little bit here and you can see the color of the tape was quite dark on that one. Perhaps it's a chrome tape or maybe cobalt or something. It just doesn't look like normal brown tape like this one at the top, your normal ferric type stuff. So you can see the difference in colour between those two. So Dr. Octagon, nice clear case, ferric tape. Public Enemy, either chrome or something like that. But either way, uh, it's nice to get new tapes since it's been a while. So here's where I got it from. Respect the Classics. The web address is at the top there, respecttheclassics.com. And as you can see, they've got quite a few of these hip-hop classics here with the lenticular covers. Not that many, but just it's nice that they've got some. And then, of course, you can get the Kanye West album at the bottom there, which is on cassette. I've also recently invested in a new, well, 23-year-old cassette deck, and it sounds great. Brothers and sisters! It's a Japanese only machine, the K333 ESJ. It's a, their version of the K990, which came out in the rest of the world, but with the addition of Dolby S. It's in this beautiful champagne colour. Of course, it's a three head cassette deck. It's got all the features I'd need in one machine, which before I was splitting across a couple of different machines, and it enables me just to simplify my hi fi setup a bit. But just a word of advice if you do want a high end cassette deck, you've got to get one now because they're getting harder and harder to come by. Now, this one costs quite a bit of money, but you can find some pretty good deals still but they're getting more and more difficult to find. Right let's come down to earth a little bit and here's something that pretty much anyone can afford whether or not they'd want it or not is another question. Now can you tell me what this is? Well probably not much point speaking because this is kind of a one-way thing by the time you're speaking it's already been recorded but anyway it's a cassette obviously but it's an endless cassette. You can see here it's got a completely different setup inside. So you've got the tape going across the bottom as normal, just ferric tape. And you can see it comes off the inside of the reel and then goes back on the outside, just like an 8-track tape does. So it pulls the tape from the inside of the spool, puts it back on the outside. Now, notice something else. There are no sprocket holes on this one. There's no wheels there for the cassette to uh, engage and turn. So how does this thing work? Well, the pinch roller does all the work. The pinch roller on the bottom just grabs the tape and pulls it through like this. So this is a cassette that doesn't use your wheels in the cassette machine. So fast forwarding obviously doesn't work and neither would rewinding, but you can't rewind an endless cassette anyway. Notice we've only got one peg we can clip out on the top there because you can only record onto one side of this, of course, because it can only go in one direction. The other side, notice it's uh, misted out. And also in French there, fast de la cassette. Well, you know what I mean. Don't use this side of the cassette in French. I, I, um, I drop French pretty quickly, so uh, excuse that. But there you go. That's what an endless cassette looks like. You can get these from Tape Line in the UK. I think you can get them from other people as well, but that's where I got mine from. They do it in various different lengths. Now, I decided to get a three-minute one. I thought I can record a song onto that. 
have it loop around. I thought it might be something to test out. So I went onto the YouTube audio library, which is where I get all the music from that I use. People sometimes ask, but it's just there, YouTube audio library. You can filter these how you want. So I put it in duration order. So I want something about three minutes-ish. So there we go, there's quite a few of those on there. And I'll turn the attribution to not required, so I don't have to put anything in the text box and I can just use the track without saying who it's from. And then pick the style of music. So I'm going to pick R&B and soul. And you can see we've got a few contenders there. There's something at three minutes and seven. I wanted to go a little bit over. Let's just have a listen to that. Now it's quite a good one now because it starts straight away. It doesn't sort of fade in. Let's just go to the end and see what that sounds like. Now that's perfect because it stops suddenly and also the end of the track sounds like the beginning. So if I get this right, I'll be able to get it to loop seamlessly. So I've put the track onto my Sony HAPS1 media player and I'm gonna play that and record it onto this cassette. So I've got the output out of the headphone socket going into the camera so you can hear all this live. So put it on record pause and then when I'm happy, take the pause off and press start on the media player. Okay, so that's the full track recorded, all three minutes and seven seconds of it. So that should be just over a full loop of the tape. So if we listen back to it now, I've set the clock going at the top at the same time. So we know when that reaches three minutes, we should have got all the way around the tape back to the beginning again. And we'll see if we can spot the join. a bit more of an obvious jump than I was hoping for. Perhaps I would have been better choosing a track that was like 2 minutes and 59 seconds or something, just having a second of silence. But, you know, it's just a bit of fun messing around with tape, something you don't tend to do nowadays, and it takes you back to when you were younger, or it does with me anyway. There's something sort of tactile and interesting about playing around with tapes that you don't get with digital files. But anyway, that is an endless tape. If you want to get hold of one of those, I'll have some links in the video description. But I think I best get back to some of these projects that I've got half finished. So that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching. People tend to refer to these as tapes, but of course the tape is the thing you sign in these are actually called compact cassettes invented by Philip. You've been watching that same video over and over all day. What's the big interest? I'm actually looking for any faults or omissions I can point out in the comments. Well, that's a productive way to spend your time. Oh look, your dad's here. Perhaps he can talk some sense into you. Hey up, only me. Oh, hiya, Dad. He's been spending all day on YouTube looking for faults in people's videos. Don't worry, love. I'll sort this out. Flipping X, son. What are you doing spending all your day on that there flipping YouTube? Exactly. If you really want to troll someone, you're better off using Facebook. That way you can really get under their skin. Yeah, but this bloke isn't on Facebook. OK, then shift over. Let me take a look. There must be some tiny insignificant error in this video. It's just a matter of finding it. Oh, now I see where you get it from. Listen, if worse comes to worse and we can't find anything, remember we can always just criticise his appearance or comment on those unfunny skits that he tacks on a Fender video. Excellent. Thanks, Dad. I wish I'd have thought of that. You're the best. No, no compliments, son. You know, rule in this family, just criticism. Anyway, put kettle on, love. I'm dying for it, brew. By the way, have you put some weight on? Oh, 